What's up y'all? Alvin here and today we're going to be tying my frog fly. Now this fly doesn't really have a name so I'm hoping you guys will leave some comments and we'll come up with a new name for this fly. Anyway, let's roll the intro. I tell the good jokes. <laughs> All right, so like most of my flies, this is a pretty quick, easy tie. We call it a guide fly. You don't spend a lot of time tying them, but they're really durable and they catch a lot of fish. So this one's not really a popper. This is maybe more of a slider, but it uh, imitates a frog. Uh, this one happens to have a uh, white underbelly, but you can also tie it with the red belly and I'm using rabbit strip for legs, rabbit zonkers, but you can also do rubber legs or these fancy Pat Cohen legs. Pat's a fly tire out of upstate New York and he manufactures a bunch of different legs and bodies and stuff like that. Uh, you can find him at rusuperfly.com. Anyhow, let's get started. So materials wise, it's pretty simple. We have a three quarter inch strip of green foam. That's three millimeter thickness. Then we have, uh, for legs, we're using the zonker strips. Pretty easy. For the body, today I'm using the uh, CTC I believe that is body fur, the same stuff you tie the game changers with. You can use white, you can use yellow, you can use dubbing. I have actually used uh, yellow egg yarn before, whatever I had on hand. Remember, it's a guide fly, so there's no rules. It's just fast, easy, and they catch fish. Uh, for the hook today, we're gonna be using that gamagatsu. Gamagatsu, Gamagatsu. <laughs> Not sure how you pronounce it. But anyway, the B10S in that is a size one on, a little bit bigger, longer shank. All right. Oh, and I don't want to forget the googly eyes. Googly eyes? Yeah, there we go. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and put the hook in the vise. We're gonna really crank down on this because we're gonna be putting some pretty serious tension on this guy. And for thread, we're just using a heavy white thread. Uh, doesn't really matter what color because the thread's gonna be mostly just covered with the foam. All right, so first thing is I'm gonna go ahead and attach the thread. And then I'm gonna put a weed guard. Now some flies I like a weed guard, some, some I don't, some could go either way, but on these frog patterns, I almost always put a weed guard on them because, uh, because of the typical frog habitat. Uh, we're usually throwing it you know, over lily pads, back in thick cover, and I think the weed guard just prevents you from losing flies or just getting snagged and running a good spot. Um, if a fish is big enough to hit a frog, they're usually gonna be big enough to smash that weed guard down. And for this, I'm using some 40 pound, fairly stiff mono. Um, just make sure whatever you use will fit through the eye of the hook and leave some clearance because we're gonna actually thread that weed guard back through the eye of the hook. All right, next thing we're gonna do is attach our legs and really simple just a piece of rabbit strip maybe what is that twice the size of the hook I just fold it in half and that seems to be about the right length for my legs that I want I'm just gonna lay them on top pinch it down tie them on now this uh, rabbit has got a lot of action in the water, so 
really moves around a lot and as you can see they'll sort of spread out look like legs impressionistic legs <laughs> all right the next thing to do is attach the foam and we're going to lay the foam down with the long end going out past the eye of the hook and then i'll just kind of pinch it do a few wraps kind of secure it if you want you can put super glue on here that will also help secure that a little better keep it from spinning now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this back but you want to make sure that you're not too close to the eye of the hook when you fold it back so i usually kind of check okay that's about right so i want to have enough room to feed that weed guard back through and also whip finish it when i'm done so that's about the right amount of clearance for the eye of the hook. All right, so at that point, we're gonna go ahead and attach our body material, under fur, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and like I said, you can use dubbing, you can use yarn, you can use whatever you got. Um, the other thing is this stuff and a lot of the other materials that I've used for the underbody is a fairly absorbent. Uh, which you think on a top water fly, you wouldn't want to use an absorbent material. But because frogs tend to hit the water with kind of a splat, I think the absorbent material actually helps with that. So it soaks up some water, that fly is gonna be heavier, it's gonna hit the water with a little bit more of a splat. Now, it is gonna be a little bit more difficult to cast, so I would recommend, you know, seven, eight weight rod and a pretty short, heavy leader so that you can turn this fly over. All right. You might also notice while I was talking there that I wrapped my thread back to the rear of the hook because uh, once we wrap this body material back that way and tie it off, we're pretty much done with this fly. So, just kind of wind that back. To about there. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie it off. Okay. All right. So now we're just going to fold that back over like so. And then we're going to come about parallel with the point of the hook. Give a couple of nice tight wraps there. Kind of squish that foam down. And so now we, we have the, uh, the body of the frog up here. Now you can also add uh, rubber legs to the front. You know, you can make this a lot fancier than I'm making it. Uh, like I said, this is a guide fly, quick and dirty. Gets the job done. All right, then we're gonna fold that foam back over again, like so. Um, this is gonna give it a little bit more flotation, kind of gives it a little lip, and a little bit more of a body back there. So, then just do a couple of Nice wraps around that. Get it nice and snug. And then we're gonna clip this off. Maybe not quite a half inch in front of where I just did my wraps. So we end up with another little flap like that because that'll also catch water. So this thing makes all kinds of commotion on the water, even though it's not technically a popper, it's more of a slider, but that little lip there will help uh, move more water. All right, so at that point, we're pretty much done with this fly. I'm gonna whip finish it. Now, this helps having a, the big whip finisher like this, the longer one, because I'm actually gonna whip finish it back here. I'm not gonna whip finish it at the eye, not yet anyway. All right. So, whip finish it. If you wanted to, you could put a drop of head cement over those wraps, but instead I'm gonna whip finish it twice. All right, so that's that. Now, 
if you want to make it a little nicer, and I usually do, uh, just kind of trim off that belly, make it a little bit smoother. So nothing fancy. Like I said, just just kind of maybe round it out a little bit, make it flat so you don't have so much uh, material hanging out underneath. All right. There's that. And the next thing is to grab that weed guard material, wrap it around the front and poke it through the eye of the hook. Then we're gonna put the fly back in the vise. Make sure we keep that, don't wanna get that weed guard twisted. All right. Tighten it down. Now we're gonna reattach the thread. What we're gonna do is we're going to uh, trap that weed guard underneath the thread. Like so. All right. And then one more whip finish, or two more whip finishes. Now you can get a marker and, you know, put some dots on it, you know, make it a little fancier if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some googly eyes on it. Just one on either side in the front. I think these also help with the, uh, oh, and that's my favorite gel control super glue. That stuff is a little thicker, so it's not as runny, less likely to get on your fingers. And I'll just put one eye on either side. I think that helps a little bit with the uh, flotation and it gives it a little bit of a rattle effect. All right, that's it. <laughs> it's ready to go. Those little rattle from those eyes uh all right so hopefully you guys like that this is a killer pattern for throwing for big bass when they're eating frogs uh i've caught a lot of fish on it but like i said it doesn't have an official name so feel free to leave some names potential names suggested names in the comments i hope you guys like that if you do give me a, a thumbs up if you didn't like it, as always, you can give me two thumbs down. Leave those comments with the name, subscribe to the channel, and good luck on the water. <laughs>